Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello, I'm Pastor Sam, and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm so glad you joined me on the program today. Doesn't matter if you're listening on the radio or watching this on television, thank you for being a part of Miracles Still Happen today. I'm so glad that you're with us. Now, I have a gift for you. Again, all you have to do is call 804-744-8881. I want to send it you, to you as a token of my appreciation. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. It means so very much to me, and I want to be a blessing to you. I'm not selling you anything. This is a gift. So call 804-744-8881. Get ready to be blessed. You know, Jesus promised that we would receive the power of the Holy Ghost and that we would be witnesses. Have you received the fullness of the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost according to Acts chapter 2 and verse 4? Do you know that this is an experiential doctrine that is anchored in biblical revelation? And today there are hundreds of millions of people around the world who've received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives the ability. You can be one of them. I'm one of them. There are many, many people right here at Victory Tabernacle who've received the fullness of the Holy Spirit just like the disciples did in the upper room 2,000 years ago in a quiet little corner of the earth called Jerusalem. You could be filled too, and that's what this message is about. The power of Pentecost is real today. So let's go together into that service where the power of God is at work and get ready to be blessed. God is a sign God. He's a sign God. Everywhere you look in Scripture, you see God revealing Himself through signs and wonders. Turn with me in your Bible to Hebrews, the second chapter and verse 4. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4 says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard Him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and divers miracles, which means different kinds of miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. 750 years before Christ was born in Bethlehem, Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. A virgin will conceive and bear a son and shall call His name Emmanuel. God is a sign God. If you go to the last chapter in the book of Mark, chapter 16, the Lord Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. And then He began to enumerate those signs. And in verse 20, He told uh, us that the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and God was working with them, confirming His Word with signs. God is a sign God. Recently, I asked some of our young people to take common, ordinary road signs and to give a spiritual application to them. And I don't really know what they did exactly because we're going to see it together for the first time right now. So you're ready to show that video? This is what they did with road signs. This sign, no U-turn, spiritually means to me that don't go back to your sinful ways that you've already passed. This road sign means to me spiritually that every time I see this road sign, it reminds me of how Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins. 
was on my learner's head. Okay, so to me, do not enter means like, don't enter into something you aren't really sure about, or people are telling you it's wrong, or like your heart's telling you it's not right, just, or to go back to your sinful ways or something like that. It just means to just stay away. Got it. To me, this road sign means spiritually that God always makes a way for us, even when we think there's no other way out, He always makes a way. Okay. <laughs> Give Him a hand. If you go to some churches, the only signs you see in the church are exit signs. But some churches have marquee signs, and some of the things that they put on those signs are very unusual and interesting. And we have some of them here, so let's look at them. These are church signs. Wrinkle with burdens, come in for a faith lift. Don't let worries kill you. Let the church help. I'm not sure if that's the right way to say that. Do not criticize your wife's judgment. See whom she married. Ladies, say amen. God help me to be the person my dog thinks I am. There are some questions that can't be answered by Google. Amen. Read the Bible. <laughs> it will scare the hell out of you. Again, I'm not sure that's the best wording. Walmart is not the only saving place. Free coffee, everlasting life. Yes, membership has its privilege. Artificial intelligence is no match for natural stupidity. <laughs> Prayer, wireless access to God with no roaming fee. Forgive your enemies, it messes with their head. God does not believe in atheists, therefore atheists do not exist. Don't be so open-minded, your brains fall out. Salvation guaranteed or your sins, sins cheerfully refunded. And those are just a few of the signs. I saw a sign the other day at a church parking lot. It says, uh, no parking, violators. Uh, it said, for members only, no parking, violators will be baptized. <laughs> but God is a sign God, I reiterate. God, in Exodus, the third chapter, cornered a tongue-tied holiness preacher by the name of Moses. He caused a common ordinary bush to just burst into a heavenly flame when he shattered the silence of the Midian desert. And he said, Moses, draw not nigh hither, but put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. And God said uh, to Moses, Now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said, God, who am I? I'm a nobody. I have a problem. I have, uh, I don't know if he had some kind of a speech impediment. I don't know if he stuttered. I don't know what the problem was. But he had difficulty articulating, had difficulty communicating what he wanted to say. And God said, well, I made your mouth. I can do whatever I want to do. But, but I'm going to accommodate you. I'll even let your brother do your talking for you, Aaron. But I want you to know I have called you. I've placed my calling on your life. And by the way, let me tell you that God's calling on your life indicates His confidence in your life. And God said, don't worry, I will overshadow your impotence with divine omnipotence and I will make the impossible possible. And He said, okay, but can you give me a sign? And God said, yes, I can. Take your hand, put it in your coat. Now take it out. Ah! I have leprosy. God said, put it back in your coat, take it out. I am the Lord God who heals thee. Hallelujah. He said, that's good. Have you got any more signs? And God says, take that walking stick you have and throw it down. And it turned into a snake. Ah! I don't know about you, but I'm just scared of two kinds of snakes, dead ones and live ones, right? And he reached down and picked it up, not by the head, but by the tail, because that serpent represented, believe it or not, the authority of God. And what God wants us to do today is to give to Him our gifts and talents. Even though they may be carnal, God will take the carnality out of them. 
He took the hiss out of the serpent when he took hold of it by the tail. But he didn't grab it by the head because God wants us to know that he is still large and in charge. And he took that by the tail and turned back into a walking stick. And God said, with this walking stick or rod, thou shalt do signs. God is a sign God. If you go to the fourth chapter of the book of Acts, you'll discover that the early church was persecuted for the cause of Christ. And the preachers were called in and commanded not to preach anymore in the name of Jesus. Well, they went back to the church and the church had a prayer meeting. And the Bible says the place where they prayed was shaken because of the Holy Ghost, the presence of the Holy Ghost. And this is what they prayed. This is kind of a a synopsis of what they prayed. They said, Lord, behold the threats of these people that have told us not to preach anymore in the name of Jesus. But we ask that you would stretch forth your hand that mighty signs would be done in the name of Jesus Christ. God is a sign God. Now, if you're going to find the signs of Pentecost in a church, you've got to go find out what they are. And the way to do that is to go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts is one of the most important books in the life of a believer. In the Gospels, we have the the manifestation of Christianity. In the epistles, we have uh, the explanation of Christianity. But in the book of Acts, we have the demonstration of Christianity. So if we're going to find out about the signs, we've got to go to the book of Acts. Now the first sign I'm going to share with you may surprise you. Because we we think about the the mighty power of God and and miracles and signs and wonders. We're going to talk about that. But the first sign is a sign you may not consider supernatural. But it is the sign of joy. Everybody say joy. joy. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have joy. Did you know that? If you don't have joy in the Holy Ghost, you just got some kind of ghost. You don't have the Holy Ghost. You know, I look at some church folk, they look like they were baptized in lemon juice. They just always sour. Look like they were weaned on a dill pickle. Looks like to me that the sheriff auctioned off their sins and they're worried about trying to get them back. I'm glad I'm saved. And the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you look at Acts 13 and verse 52, you see something really strange because it seems to be out of place. Here are church people that have been faithful to the Lord and as a result of their faithfulness, they're being persecuted intensely. And in fact, they've even suffered physical harm and violence. And the Bible says they were filled, listen, the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. You cannot have this blessed Holy Ghost baptism without having incontestable, unspeakable, unquenchable joy. Somebody say amen. Amen. It is a reality of the presence of God. In the fullness, or in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Philip was an evangelist. He went down to Samaria and preached to them and revival broke out. And the Bible says there was great joy in that city. You can't even find joy in some churches. Can you imagine a Holy Ghost revival that brought joy to an entire city? Oh, I've got joy like a river and it flows continuously. I'm glad I've got real Holy Ghost joy. How about you? Come on, give God praise if you've got joy. Joy and the Holy Ghost. Joy that's not dependent on circumstances. Now, sometimes circumstances will produce happiness. Amen? There's a boy that uh, wanted to uh, have a car and and he wanted a car so bad, and he asked his father for a car. His father was a, a, a wealthy fellow, but he didn't trust his son. He felt like his son really didn't, couldn't be trusted and wasn't mature enough. But he said, now, son, I'm going to let you drive my new Mercedes. And, and just to show you, I, I, I trust you, but, but you need to be uh, uh, responsible. And I'll let you drive my new Mercedes and then we'll see about getting your car. So oh, he was so thrilled. And he drove his Mercedes down the block and came back. 
And he walked in the house and his head was down. He said, Dad, I'm sorry. I know I'm not trustworthy. He said, I did uh, have a little problem uh, driving. He said, I, I have uh, scraped uh, your bumper and I'm real sorry. He said, well, let's go out and look at it. He said, you scraped my bumper. He said, yeah. I said, uh, we'll have to open the trunk. He said, it's in the trunk. Uh, and uh, I knocked it off completely really is what I did. And, and, and sometimes, you know, things will happen and just you, 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 you lose your happiness. You were happy one minute, but now you're not happy, you know. Uh, you, 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 know what, uh, you know what the definition of uh, a kind of uh, mixed signals is and, 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 and mixed emotions? It's when you got a new car, a brand new car, and your mother-in-law is driving it and she goes off a cliff. And you look at that and you think, new car, mother-in-law, new car, mother-in-law. It, it's mixed emotions. That's bad, I know, I'm sorry. But just because you have happiness in your life doesn't mean you have joy. You might have, have happiness and lose it, but you can't lose joy. You see, the world didn't give you the joy. The devil didn't give you the joy. Jesus gave you the joy. You got the joy because you got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And as long as you're filled with the Spirit, you've got joy. The Bible says in Acts chapter 16 and verse 16, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, to the Spirit, not to the woman, to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Now I want you to notice a couple of things about this passage. First of all, this woman was not lying. She told the truth. She said, these men are the servants of the Most High God. The problem was the devil doesn't need to be advertising for God's people. I don't want the devil bragging on victory. Amen? I don't want the devil bragging on me. The Bible says you ought to be uh, careful that everybody doesn't speak well of you. I don't want the devil speaking well of me. I want the devil hating me. I want to be on hell's hit list. Amen? I don't want the devil to commend me and brag on me. And even though everybody else didn't know what was going on, the Holy Ghost in Paul knew what was happening. And the Holy Ghost said, this woman is discrediting your ministry. She's going to cancel out your effectiveness if you don't do something. But he turned to the Spirit and he said, I command you. I'm not suggesting to you. I'm not encouraging you to do it. I'm commanding you to come out. They said, there's a man got in a prayer line. He was overweight and he came up and the preacher said, what do you want? He said, I got overeating demon. And he said, you come out of there, you overeating demon. And the man said, mm. He said, you come out of there, you overeating. Mm -mm. I said, come out of you overeating demon. And the man said, give me a cookie and I will. I believe there's some people that don't even understand spiritual warfare. He didn't say, I suggest to you. He didn't say, I'm trying to get you to come out if you want to. He said, I command you, you big, fat, hairy devil. You get out of there, you nasty thing. Come on out of that woman in the name of Jesus. And he came out. He didn't argue with him. He just came on out. Now, listen, watch this. When the devil came out of this woman, this will help some of you. The devil came out of this woman, and she couldn't predict anybody's future with any accuracy. So when you, when you go to the horoscope to try to find out what's going to happen to you, shame on you. Why would you need the horoscope if you got the Holy Ghost? Why do you want to call 1-800-PSYCHIC and talk to a psychic friend? Amen? They had a, what was that thing? They had that network, that psychic network that went out of business. They went broke. It looks like it being psychics, they would have known they were going broke, wouldn't they? <laughs> but they didn't, they, and, and, and so everybody wants a shortcut to the supernatural. Let me tell you, you get full of the Holy Ghost and you'll be led by the Spirit and you won't misstep. You won't get in trouble. The Holy Ghost will tell you what to do. The Holy Ghost will show you what to do. Amen? And so, but, but now watch, sometimes there are consequences when you take a stand. A lot of people want to take a stand, but they don't want consequences. They don't want anybody to dislike them. They want to get along with everybody. They remind me of the man that went to his first job. It was going to be a teacher. And he was nervous, and he went to this little country school, and the way out in the sticks, and the principal said, now, this could determine whether or not you get this job. Do you believe the earth is round or flat? He thought to himself, I'm out here in the country. Maybe they hadn't heard about it being round. And he looked at the teacher, and he said, well, I'll tell you what, or the principal, he said, I can teach it either way, round or flat, it doesn't matter. 
And there's some people that think they'll get along with the world by just compromising with the world. And they lose their effectiveness. They lose their peace. They lose their joy. They lose their witness. I know sometimes you'll take a stand and people will hate you for your stand. But you've got to take a stand anyway. And so here they have cast the devil out of this woman and it made her masters angry because they couldn't get any money anymore for people. They'd try to come and, and, and read their fortune and they couldn't do it. And so they got mad at Paul and Silas. And the Bible said they put them in prison. Now, there they are. Their backs are beaten. Their hands are chained. And their feet are in stocks. And there they are with rats scurrying around in the prison. And, and no doubt it was dank and dark and damp in there and nasty. And here they are in a prison. They're not at a suite at the Waldorf Astoria. They're in a prison. And there's some folks that, that they come to church and it's like, oh, it's just a little bit too cool in here. I, I, I can't worship because I'm cool. I, I just, I get goosebumps on my chill bumps. And when I, I get like that, I just can't worship. And somebody else come in and say, it's too hot in here. They need to turn the air on. I pay my tithe. Why don't they have the thing regulated, right? It's too hot in here. And somebody will say, well, I would worship today, but I do declare they've got the thing turned up so loud I can't hear myself think. So I'm not going to worship. I'm just not going to open my mouth. I'm going to fold my arms, sit down here, and I'm not going to worship. And somebody else will come in and say, well, I was coming in here to praise God, but I looked down the row and I saw Billy Bob, and he cheated me out of $15 to Ten years ago. I've not forgiven him for it. And just imagine if I had that, what the interest would be on that if he just paid me back. He owes me $6,000 right now. Just interest, compounded interest on that $15 he didn't pay me back. And you lost the victory. And you got a hundred reasons why you can't praise God. Can you imagine if they threw you in jail for preaching the gospel and casting the devil out of somebody? What would you do? I know what they did. The Bible said they prayed and sang praises unto God. Hallelujah. And, and, and when they began to praise God, the Bible said the prisoners heard them. They got loud with it. I think it's time for us to get loud and get proud. Amen. Oh, we, we don't want to be the silent majority. We want to speak out and be heard. And they're just praising God and the prisoners heard them. I don't know what they were singing. I like to use my imagination. I believe Paul said, let's sing, Silas, come on, you can sing harmony. Will you sing high tenor? And I'll sing, the windows of heaven are open. The blessings are flowing tonight. I've got joy, joy, joy in my soul since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old filthy garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven and that's why I'm happy. That's why I'm happy. That's why I'm happy tonight. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And they're hearing him say, he, somebody in there happy. Somebody's got joy. What's going on? And I believe God in heaven was looking down on the site and he's patting his foot. Mmm, I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying that. And he got to patting his foot and, and, and he put his foot down on the jailhouse one time and shook it and there was a great earthquake. I saw the foundation of the prison was shaking. That was the first jailhouse rock. Yeah, baby. Now me, I can't do an Elvis impersonation. It's my church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and when he, the, the jailhouse shook and everybody walked out free men. Why? Because they were full of the Holy Ghost. And when you're full of the Holy Ghost, you're going to have joy no matter what happens. The devil can't take it from you. The devil can't steal your joy. It is a supernatural sign that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise that's got joy in the house. I want us to pray together right now. I believe the Spirit of God is at work. And allow me to lead you in a prayer. Are you ready? Pray like this. Dear Heavenly Father, have mercy on me. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Heal my body. Make me whole. 
Thank you, Father, for meeting every need in my life according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, I believe God's heard and answered that prayer. I really do. Now you give God praise and then call us right here. That's 804-744-8881. Again, the number to call is 804-744-8881. And when you call that number, you're going to find a friendly voice and just tell them, look, I want that gift that Pastor Sam said I could have because I'm giving to you something special just for being a part of our program today. Again, the number to call is 804-744-8881. When you receive Christ in your life, the most important thing after that is to find the right church, a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled, on-fire church. May I recommend Victory Tabernacle to you? Be sure to join us every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock right here uh, for worship. But if you're unable to get here, remember that you can watch every morning live streaming on the internet from 11 to 12 every Sunday morning. That's 11 to 12 live streaming. Now here's what you do. Go to our website. That's victorytab.org and you just click on live streaming and then from 11 to 12 every Sunday morning you can join us in our worship service. The last Sunday of every month is our Miracle Sunday. So at 6 o'clock the last Sunday of every month, 6 p.m., we have a miracle service and God is confirming His Word with mighty signs and wonders and miracles. Also remember on Wednesday night you can find us here in our Family Enrichment Night service. Beginning at 7, we have Royal Rangers for the Boys, Missionettes for the Girls, a dynamic program for youth and for young adults, and I'm teaching in the main sanctuary. So remember that. Also, and this is very exciting, we now have a 24-hour a day radio program. It's internet radio called Victory Battle Cry. All you have to do, again, go to our website. That's victorytab.org. And all you have to do is click on Victory Battle Cry. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the message of the good news of Jesus Christ is going out over Victory Battle Cry Radio. So be sure to tune in and tell a friend. Thank you for joining me on the program today. Remember, call that number, 804. I shared it with you eight, earlier, 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881 and ask for the free gift. We want to send it out to you free and postpaid just because we love you. And until we're together again just like this, remember the Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings the victory and miracles still happen.